Wow, I am so excited to be here at this TEDx event hosted by Holt Business School and talk to you about my topic today, the marketing revolution and China. This is my first camera and I thought it was simply the greatest invention in the world. A little button that you could press down after you put your film inside the camera and you could also put a light bulb in there, use it once, it would come out with this fantastic flash. And then you would take the film and you'd bring it to a store and you'd wait maybe a week or two weeks and then you'd go down to the store and you'd pick up the film which had been developed into pictures and maybe within a month you'd have your photos. And it was so exciting but I thought, you know, wouldn't it be nice if I could get my photos a little bit faster? And sure enough, by 1975 Kodak had developed the first digital camera and it wasn't until 15 years later that these digital cameras became commercially available. And I got my first digital camera, I thought, wow, this is just amazing, but you know, the quality is not so good, so I hope this improves someday. And sure enough, here it is in 1999, we had our first digital single lens reflex cameras. Oh, fantastic. It's amazing. You can take these great photos, you can see them right before your eyes when you take them. And then something happened which was completely unexpected. This camera, the Canon 5D Mark II, takes HD quality video. Now, for those of you who are not in production, you can't understand the impact of having a little camera and going anywhere and shooting. And the first time I used this when I was, a mo when I was an actor is this video here. Now, now imagine my surprise when I go on set and somebody has a camera this size and they're filming a TV commercial. This TV commercial was shown nationally in Taiwan and I thought, how is that possible that you can use a camera this size and actually come out with an advertisement that can be played on TV? And it did. And I've got to tell you that now this camera is so popular all around the world, especially in China. I use this almost exclusively when I do production and I'd say about 30% of all the TV commercials and other video that's shot is with this amazing camera. And it's so incredible that a whole industry has grown up around the 5D with these peripherals which help to create all sorts of productions. But it's not just here in China and it's not just for small TV commercials. If any of you are familiar with this show called House, the six season finale was shot exclusively with this little camera. And I'm going to show you how amazing it is to use it and how easy it is. I'm just turning this on. I'm going to have it on video. I'm going to autofocus and you're all going to be stars in my movie right now. Everybody smile, say hello, hello, hello. I've just shot HD video. Unbelievable. So, we have this great technology, it's easier to use, it's faster, it's lighter, and where are we seeing these videos? Well, absolutely everywhere. As you go down the street, you can see these giant screens, you can see inside buildings, these large screens, in your taxi screens, mobile screens, when you're waiting for the elevator, when you're at a store, when you're at home watching video, on your computer, on your tablet, on your little mobile phone, and now even on my watch, I can watch a video. Google has come out with this amazing, uh, for the first ever, <laughs> glasses that will do the amazing, which is film, and you'll be watching video on those very, very soon. Now let me tell you about my first telephone. 
I remember this was in my parents' house, and I would go downstairs, and I'd make a call, and I'd have to stand right next to the telephone, and I was thinking, wow, wouldn't it be nice? I'm a little bit tired just standing here making a phone call. Can't I just, like, go into my bedroom and, you know, make a phone call and just relax? And sure enough, by 1996, I had my first mobile phone. No cord. I could talk anywhere. It was fantastic. Just amazing. What could be better than this? And then somebody said to me one day, you know what, you're going to be able to surf the internet on your phone. I thought, are you kidding? Would I really use that? <laughs> sure enough, 1996, we have our first web browsing on a Nokia phone. And then somebody said to me, you know what, one of these days, you're going to have on your mobile phone a camera. And I thought, are you kidding me? And would I ever really use that? <laughs> 2001, we have our first mobile phone, uh, first camera phone. And by 2006, half of the models produced in the world, just five years later, half of all mobile phones have a camera. And I've got to say, I can't live without mine. It's just remarkable. Now we have mobile phones which have such incredible clarity, like this one with 13.1 megapixels. And what are we using it for? Well, this is the front page of the New York Times, March 18th, 2013. And what's amazing about this is that for the first time ever, this very well-respected newspaper, the New York Times, has a photo that's been taken by a mobile phone and they're using it on their front page and it's edited with Instagram. We've certainly come a long way, haven't we? This is my first computer. It's called a portable, and it was like a giant suitcase that I had to carry around. And it only had one program at a time that could be used with these three and a half inch uh, floppies. And mostly it did just word processing. There really wasn't very much to it. And this is back in 1987, so there's really no internet at that point. There's no public internet. Public internet really doesn't occur until 1994, 1995. And here's my new amazingly fast computer, which I just bought in the US. And it keeps me connected with 2.27 billion people around the world, including 564 million internet users in China alone. As a population in the entire world, we spend 35 billion, 35 billion hours per month online. And the thing I like most about the internet, which was quoted by Benjamin Franklin, is that the greatest thing about the internet is that you can quote something and just totally make up the source. <clears throat> and of course, it's not just on our computers, but on our mobile phones that we're accessing the internet. One billion people worldwide, China 400 million people. So what are people using the internet to do? How is this going to help us to do marketing? Well, first of all, e-commerce globally is $1.5 trillion. Alibaba is now the largest e-commerce e company in the world with more than one trillion renminbi in sales. And when you look at this, you'll see that a lot of the e-commerce that is being done, like Alibaba, like eBay, relies on people submitting their own marketing materials which of course is possible now because we have this amazing technology, these fantastic cameras, fantastic mobile phones, which can take incredible pictures like never before. You don't need professionals these days to help you do marketing. In China, social media is extremely important for a variety of reasons, including the way information and news is restricted by the government. And so what we see is, Tremendous amounts of people who respect and listen to word of mouth of others who really pay attention to what's happening on Weibo and other social media networks. Sina Weibo, 400 million registered users. Tencent Weibo, 507 million registered users. QQ, almost 800 million active users. Wow, if I want to do marketing, 
I know exactly where I want to go in China. Youku Tudo have now merged and they have 1.6 billion hours of video watched every month. YouTube remains still now the largest um, video sharing website. It's the third most visited website in the world. One billion visitors each month. And what are we watching on YouTube? In the middle, I'm messing Yeah. I'm going to see if it's too hard. The cough is killed. In a 24 hour period, this video had 2.5 million clicks. 2.5 million clicks in a 24 hour period. Everyone knows PSY now. He's become an international sensation. 1.5 billion hits on YouTube. His new video just came out, Gentleman. It had 100 million hits in four days. Incredible. Now, I was back in the U.S. and I was watching some videos there and I saw this video with uh, Jim Carrey, who's a famous actor in the United States. And I was thinking about how amazing it was that an actor of such great fame, who's in so many movies, would do a video on the internet. And we see many, in, at least in the, in the U.S., we see many of these stars who are bringing their star power to the internet with videos. It's faster, it's more convenient, it's flexible. You can watch it anytime that you want. And as China has, and I think in some ways we could all agree with the whole idea of taking off some sort of entertainment programs, as they are now reducing the ability of people to watch on TV the sort of programs that are entertaining, like German guys jumping into a pool <laughs> with ice, what we have is a situation where you're not seeing programs like the Jersey Shore. But these are popular shows. People need to watch these entertainment shows in other locations if it's not going to be on TV. So what do we have? We have this great opportunity for people to be creative and bring their ideas like micro movies and whatever it is to the internet. But the problem is, no matter how easy we can access the internet, how much flexibility we have, if there are bad ideas, nobody wants to watch it. And because there's so much content out there, you really have to catch people's attention very, very quickly, and you need to do a good job quickly. So to quote Elvis Presley, the only thing worse than watching a bad movie is being in one. So how are we going to get the ideas, especially in China, to create exciting sorts of video content. Well, first of all, we have DVDs that have been around forever. People have been doing marketing in China overseas for many, many years, so we can see these exciting ideas that are being brought out. And in this country, people are very, very good at finding ideas and kind of utilizing them for themselves. But what we have now with the internet, with the ability to access so much information and also with these specialized searches where we can just get video or we can get photos, is we have this opportunity to gain ideas from all sorts of sources all throughout the world. So if we don't just take a single person's idea but we have a mix of those ideas, we come up with this amazing creativity. And this is a modeling job that I did not long ago where as a reference, they wanted me to look or have the same expression as Anthony Hopkins, and they had some other photos of a butler, and this is how <laughs> I came out. So the ability to have these reference videos will, and, and photos will definitely increase the creativity and the excitement. Okay, so now we have this tremendous online content, and what are we going to do with it? We're going to start using it 
to market. And how much spending was there? 1.6 billion plus dollars, US dollars, spent on marketing throughout the world. In China, they estimate by 2016, 31 billion. Here's an advertisement. When you sit down to watch Yoku or one of these other video sharing sites, you're going to be forced to watch some sort of video. And of course, banner ads. Now, I showed this to you before, but maybe you didn't notice there's a banner around here. And that wouldn't be very surprising because there's something called banner blindness. So they've done a study, and it shows that people, when they look at the internet, kind of just don't even look at the banner. And we have these tremendous statistics now that are available when you're doing something online where you can actually see what's happening with the buying behavior, with the marketing behavior, so we can isolate those areas where we're being more successful and not successful, which of course will lead to better marketing. And here's a marketing came campaign by Cartier in which they have actually taken a video and they've built it around this whole idea of their products. We have more focused advertising. So for instance, I had been online looking at a new computer and then HP knows this through their algorithms. And so when I get online and I look for something, here I was just doing a search, they come up and I say, wow, how did that happen? How did they know I was looking for HP? And here it is. I was in Las Vegas and I was doing a search and they knew that I was in Las Vegas. So they came up with this ad here about some activity that's having, happening in Las Vegas. And Google has come up with new search algorithms which is going to help people better find the items that they're really looking for. And finally, because we're all interconnected with our mobile phones, we're going to be walking down the street someday soon and we're going to say, oh, you know, it's about lunch and everything's going to be synced on my mobile phone and I really need a place to go get a cup of coffee and as I'm walking, psh, there it's going to come up. There's going to be Starbucks make a left over here. And I'm not going to be sure, well, I don't know what they mean by make a left, and I'm going to take my Google glasses, and I'm going to put them on, and I'm going to see directions with an arrow pointing. So, okay, here it is, here's Starbucks. And then I'm going to say, but I, I wonder if this is a Starbucks I really want to go to, and I'm going to look at my watch, and I'm going to press, and I'm going to come up with a video, and I go, okay, that's good. And then I'm going to press here and make a reservation and say, okay, this is what I'd like to order, and I'll be there in 15 minutes, and I'll sit down, my coffee will be all prepared. So marketing in the future is going to become more targeted. It's going to become more helpful for us. It's going to be fantastic because everything that we need, marketers are going to help us find that. Now, there's still going to be a lot of things out there that we don't care about, and we'll have our banner blindness or our video blindness or whatever blindness we have, and we're going to focus on the things that are really helpful for us. So just to recap some of my ideas, Obviously, in the future, with the tremendous ability of the internet going faster, more hotspots, cheaper devices, better devices, we're going to see more users on the internet, more of them using mobile. We're going to see more on and offline videos, and we're going to see more online sales, which of course means we're going to be doing more online marketing. And one of the things, especially in China, that we see, which will continue to happen in the future, is through social media, we're going to have a tremendous impact on people's ability to influence buyers' decisions. And that's going to be, of course, impacted by the fact that we have these great mobile phones, these great cameras, where everybody can do marketing. And we're going to see greater entertainment, including more Germans jumping into ice-filled pools, I'm sure, and we're going to have many more stars who are going to gravitate to the internet because it's going to be such a fantastic way for people to access entertainment and other programs. Better video content and the online community will provide opportunities for any one of us to become a star overnight. And lastly, as I said before, our marketing is going to become much more targeted, much more helpful for us. It's going to be beneficial in the future, and we're going to really enjoy the opportunity to look at our mobile phones and find out exactly everything that we need almost all the time. Um, and lastly, because, especially in China, we have such a large country with so many regional differences, and because there are so many different products throughout the country, we are going to see a great need 
for more video, for more marketing, and so this is going to encourage people at local levels using their cameras, using their iPhones, to do greater marketing of products throughout. Thank you very much for this opportunity to be here. Really a pleasure to share some of my views. Thank you very much.